Hey everybody, this is Jen with Garden Jen's Journey. First week in August and I figured I'd take you for a walk around the garden and show you what's going on out there. So let's go take a walk. So this is my container bed area. Um, got lots of different plants growing in my containers. And then over there in the corner is my Mongolian giant sunflower. It's at the 10 foot mark really really tall and that one's still growing it hasn't put a flower head on it the shorter ones are starting to grow their flower heads and then over this way bed of chamomile uh, some flower pots and then um, this is basil and lemongrass and then right here is my sunflowers. These were supposed to be sunrise sunflowers, but um, they're not sunflowers. They are, uh, I'm guessing they're a cross between the sunrise and the lemon queen, which I grew last year, because they're the color of the lemon queen, but the size of the sunrise. So anyways, um, got those there. And then some yellow pear tomatoes. I just planted one here, and I have some others um, along the other side of the fence. And then I have gigantic lima beans that are I uh, have three plants um, and they're growing up the sunflower here. Okay, as we take a walk in here, um, hoping the sun stays behind the clouds so we don't have too much glare. But these are the rest of my indeterminate tomatoes that I'm growing for the farm or the family. Um, I have some more yellow pears here and then I have some bumblebees. <clears throat> And then I have Berry's Crazy Cherry and Golden Nugget there. And these will grow up the uh, fence line here. And then that's my grapes. And I have a string of lines so they grow that way because they're starting to grow up over here um, over the wire and that's not good. Uh, this is my flower bed area. Has my roses in it and quite a few other things. <clears throat> We've been weeding a lot today because the mulch has broken down quite a bit. It's almost dirt now and of course it's very fertile and the weeds love it. So we've been pulling weeds and then putting down uh, fresh layers of mulch. <clears throat> My medicinal bed here, um, it was really full just a little bit ago. Um, this is where my valerian was and my valerian grows up that tall and then it dies back and you have to cut it down and then it starts all over again. Then I have lemon balm and that is coxcomb right there. Then I have yarrow and this is a mammoth sunflower. I had to stake it because it was um, with our winds here and stuff. Sunflowers that grow big um, don't do very well without being staked because they'll get blown over. Um, so yeah that's a mammoth sunflower there. And then I have um, right there is variegated lemon thyme, very beautiful. And tucked in back there's some yarrow and there's also some echinacea, you can't really see it right here. And then chives, um, whorehound, uh, that's purple echinacea and blue hyssop. And then some light colored purple bee balm back there. And then this is my other bee balm, it's a little bit darker purple. And then I have the red in here. This area is my pollinator bed. And my husband just um, helped fence it in today because uh, again, with our winds and then we had torrential downpours yesterday, the tall plants like the bee balm and especially the tansy, they were knocked down and they were laying across the walkways and you couldn't get through. So my husband put the this fence here kind of not only to show where the bed is but to help support the tall plants um, when they get knocked down so he just finished that for me today so again we have um, this is bee balm then my bachelor buttons um, tucked down in here you can't see them much anymore because they're dying back I had some safflower and some calendula and then some borage <clears throat> My Gallardia finally started blooming. It's way behind. And then tucked down between the Gallardia and the pot, I actually have some Red Cox comb. In the pot, I have uh, carrots planted for fall. 
But yeah, this is a tansy. And it's really, really big. It's about six foot tall. Look at these beautiful, teeny, tiny yellow flowers. The bees just love this. But um, this plant, you couldn't get through right here because it had fallen down right across the walkway and you can get through. So um, again, my husband put up this fence to kind of give it some support and contain it a little bit. <clears throat> and like I said, we've been pulling weeds like crazy. <clears throat> then I have some that sage and that's yellow uh, echinacea. I just deadheaded that. I only had one flower this year from it. Um, but I'm hoping I'll get like that. I'll be full of flowers eventually. And then I have some fig trees. I got one there and one there. And then of course the um, milkweed. I let milkweed grow in certain spots. Like there's a tall one right there. Um, because of the monarch butterflies. Um, milkweed is essential for the monarch butterflies. So I allow the milkweed to grow in certain spots. Um where it's not going to compete with other plants and where it's not just going to be in the way. That way uh, it helps our butterflies out. And then this uh, here I have Trail of Tear beans growing um, as a secondary planting. And then I just planted some more blue shelling peas that will grow once the beans are done. <clears throat> This area here, I did have beets and kohlrabi in, but now it's been succession planted with um, lettuce. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but I have a bunch of little lettuce sprouts growing. We just, like I said yesterday, we just had torrential rains, so I have a whole bunch of little sprouts of lettuce growing. So I'm excited with that. And then uh, these are my Roma tomatoes huge bush of Roman tomatoes and back there that is my uh, Paswaga blue corn and tucked in there with the Paswaga blue is uh, blue hubbard squash and uh, trail of tears beans to grow up there and dry out and I have another squash that's going to grow up this trellis here these are blue hod beans then I have uh, current tomatoes. These are very, very tiny tomatoes, and even the plants are tiny. Look at how thin and delicate these plants are. So these are current tomatoes, and then um, some dill, <clears throat> and lots of petunias. I have lots of flowers growing in the garden to help with pollinators. <clears throat> Like somebody once said, we planted about as much, many flowers as we do vegetables to uh, help bring in pollinators and support the ecosystem that way. <clears throat> I don't know what my rooster's upset about, but anyway. <laughs> this is dino kale, and then um, I have Greek and dwarf basil here. And then behind that I have onions, and this is the lone eggplant. I only had one eggplant that survived uh, the frost and everything else. I have cabbage back there. We actually harvested a cabbage today. It was really good size, size of about a volleyball. Uh, then I have black mountain trail watermelon there, some broccoli, some red cabbage, and this is Moonbeam Watermelon there. This is where my garlic was at the beginning of the season. The garlic's all gone and I've replanted. I have some Echinacea there. Um, this is Zucchini. Uh, that's a sellable mix of lettuce greens, calendula, um, Kentucky pole beans here. Uh, and I replanted uh, or just planted some peas there as well. So when the beans are dying back, the peas will be taking their place. <clears throat> this is a uh, cucumber. My loofah. My loofah is doing really well as far as growth. I haven't seen any blossoms yet. I'm a little worried about that because it is August and here in Zone B, it gets cold around October or so and damp 
And so if we don't start getting gourds soon growing on this, I don't think they'll dry out in time uh, to be salvageable for this year. But we'll see. <clears throat> they have some mustard. And these are some more beans here. These are Triumphal Violetto. And I don't have a lot of these beans. The, I lost a lot of beans because of the frost. And I only had so many um, seeds. So these beans here are being grown strictly to um, get my, my seeds back so I can plant again next year. So again, these are Triumphal Violetto beans there. And then I have cucumbers back there. There's some more sage, some petunias, uh, rosemary. Uh, that is purple cabbage. <clears throat> some more zucchini. Uh, five color silver beet, Swiss chard, and then my different peppers here. Um, some sorrel, and this is Russian kale, red Russian kale, and some more um, chamomile. I have chamomile everywhere because I use a lot of chamomile. And then I'll take you back here to the last spot. I actually have uh, peppers growing in my greenhouse because some of the hotter peppers need. Um, higher climate, and so I have them in here. Um, these are my lipstick peppers. They're a sweet pepper, not necessarily a hot pepper, but I kind of ran out of room out there, and so I have them in here. That's my jalapeno, and then late to the party and not doing so well. I think the cats got in there. Um, this is my cayenne, and then my Jimmy Nardellos. So they're really tiny because they were late to the party. I'm not really expecting to harvest, but I planted anyways just to see, just to see what we would get. And I do have some peppers growing there, so I'm excited. This is my garlic harvest. I had it out here drying out. So, um, yeah. Got lots of blossoms, and I do have some uh, peppers there. So that's what my garden's looking like right now. A lot going on. Um, like I said, we had to do a lot of weeding because this is very fertile ground now. And so, of course, the weeds are going to take advantage of that. And then um, back here, <clears throat> I have my chickens, of course. <laughs> but these are my elderberry bushes. They are starting to form berries on them. It's going to be time to start covering the berries with uh, some sort of cloth to prevent the birds from eating them all. And then this is marshmallow. And it's really tall, really pretty. The pollinators love it. So um, that's a, it's a medicinal herb. You can also use the roots of the marshmallow to make marshmallows. That's originally how marshmallows became what they are today. So yep, that's a marshmallow plant. But yeah, my chickens, I'll show you guys my chickens because I don't think I've showed you guys my chickens in a while. Um, <clears throat> so I have a mixed flock. I have Isa Reds or Isa Browns. Can't remember which ones they are. Isa Browns. Um, I have some. I have two Aracana hens, and then that's an Aracana rooster. Um, Brahmas, and I don't see them right now. Oh, there's they're over there. I have a couple um, barred rocks. So um, our chickens get all of our greens. Uh, they get the weeds. They get um, uh, damaged, uh, like that's kale that was uh, insect damaged and whatever. They get that. Um, they get uh, leftover fruits and vegetables uh, so it doesn't go to waste. And they just enjoy it. They're very healthy. The eggs that we get are very healthy and um, what they don't eat um, by by their very nature they are composting it for us so uh, towards the fall or even in the spring we will take this top layer here you can see that brahma over there she's doing a good job of digging digging things in the ground um, this will be wonderful compost to top dress the garden with so chickens are a good thing um, even if you don't eat the eggs, you can sell the eggs and that helps pay for their feed. Um, so yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> right, Brownie? Uh, she's an interesting colored hen. Anyways, so that is what's going on in the garden. 
and on the homestead in general. I just thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope wherever you are, you're having a blessed day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.